Today's video is inspired by white belt mistakes I was making eight years ago because I'm still seeing white belts making these same mistakes. With a few easy and simple changes, we can transform our game. So let's jump right into it. First up, unnecessary stalemates. In this scenario, you are in the guard and your opponent is trying to get out of your guard. What normally happens from what I see is the opponent stands up, you maintain your guard unrelenting to letting him open your guard at all for a potential pass. And because you're holding on for dear life, he stands there pushing on your knees and you stay there wrapped in the guard and nothing happens from here. You guys end up standing here for way too long and no one's getting anything out of this. When you find yourself in one of these unnecessary stalemates and they happen from all different kinds of positions, instead of holding on like this and not letting the match advance itself, you can begin to open up and present an opportunity for a guard pass to your opponent. Now you gotta remember, there is opportunity in movement. I want you to remember that, opportunity in movement, right? If your opponent begins to try to pass your guard, there's movement there. Because there's movement, there's opportunity, and there's ways for you to take advantage of that. If you relentlessly hold on to this position, you're not going to allow your opponent any kind of movement, and you're not gaining anything from that either, right? You're not in a necessarily a position of advantage. You're not hunting for submissions. You're just holding on because you're scared of what he might do. So as you can see, I begin to open my guard and present an opportunity for him to pass. In his passing attempt, there is opportunity for me to swivel into half guard, to start working sweeps, potentially finding ways to capitalize on his mistakes. These mistakes, this movement would have never happened if I didn't open up and give him an opportunity for that. Now, obviously there will be times and situations where this stalemate is necessary, such as fighting your way out of a submission or a choke. These are times where you don't want your opponent to have opportunity for movement because they could progress the submission to completion. So I wanna make sure you're not confusing what I'm saying here. Situations where your opponent is standing up in your guard and you're refusing to open your guard because you're afraid of him passing, this is an unnecessary stalemate. You're not doing anything for yourself. Neither of you are learning from this situation, right? Especially if you're in a training environment, not a tournament, but a training environment. Open your guard, let him pass, find movement in there because there is opportunity in movement. And I do believe you will learn more from that movement and that opportunity than you ever will from an unnecessary stalemate. And I just want to take a quick second to give my sponsor, X Marshall, a shout out. X Marshall does more for the community than any other brand out there. They sponsor over 300 athletes of all levels, and they even work with kids to help them on their martial arts journey. They've given away over $10,000 in gear in 2023. So if you want to look as good as me and probably even better, get over to X Marshall now and start your shopping. They're always running some kind of a deal. You can also use my discount code IRONWILL to save yourself some money. All right, well, I think that covers it. Let's jump back to the video. This next one has been requested several times and it is near and dear to me because it's something I've been working on since I was a white belt eight years ago and that's breath work while you roll. How do you breathe while you roll? Well, a lot of times what we see white belts doing is right before they make big movements, they hold their breath. You know, right before they work for a sweep or maybe go for a, a submission or even a takedown, they hold their breath and guess what this does? This is a great way to gas yourself out. If you pay attention to what high level grapplers do, they are constantly breathing throughout the entire match. The only time they're not breathing is if they are successfully being choked. So in this example, as you see me affecting a sweep, I'm not holding my breath through this movement. That is an incorrect procedure. That will not work in my benefit. It's not going to make me stronger. It's only going to gas me out in the end. So what I need to do is take a big deep breath and exhale through that movement, constantly reminding yourself and focusing to breathe while we roll. This helps provide a constant flow of oxygen into your blood, to your muscles, allowing you to perform effectively. Our muscles need oxygen. Our blood needs to be oxygenated. If we're holding our breath, we're destroying our effectiveness. Typically, I like to focus on nasal breathing only. It's filtered, it's warmed, it's a higher quality air, right? And then I only use my mouth for breathing when I absolutely need it. It's like having like a sixth or seventh gear. 
try to get used to breathing only through your nose, especially, you know, when you're weightlifting, when you're doing your warm ups in jujitsu, whatever it is you're doing, whenever you feel that necessity to breathe more, truly try to focus on breathing through your nose. And when that is not enough, switch to your mouth. This will make you so much more effective with your breath work. This is something that you're going to improve with time and effort. So really pay attention to your breath while you roll. If you catch yourself holding your breath, this is something that I caught myself doing. To be fully honest, I still catch myself every now and then holding my breath a little bit, right? This is something we work on and with time and practice, it will get better. As a white belt, you're probably doing it a lot more than you realize, so pay attention to it because this can be a game changer. Number three, failing to set up submissions. Now, setups are something that you're going to see all throughout jujitsu, whether we're talking takedowns, getting to a better position, or even shooting submissions. One of the first submissions we learn as a white belt is being able to hit the arm bar from guard. And I'm gonna give it to you straight. If your opponent is doing everything right, framing off your body, keeping good pressure, keeping good posture, this is a nearly impossible submission to hit without a setup, yet we all try to hit this without setups, especially in the beginning. Even for someone who's been training for a long time, there's a very low chance you're gonna hit this submission without some kind of a setup. So in most circumstances, when we're trying to hit a submission, your setup can come from threatening something else, like a sweep or maybe a fake submission, right? A faulty submission that you don't really want. You're using that to take their brain somewhere else to make an opening to hit the submission you do want. In this specific example, I'm threatening with a sweep. Now, if he doesn't respect the sweep, he will get swept. But if he respects the sweep and pushes back into me, that allows me an opportunity to use our weight collapsing back down to drape his arm across my waist, which allows me to initiate the arm bar. The point is, as you progress through your jujitsu journey, you will see that there's opportunity for this all over the place and your submission rate will go up once you start relying more on your setups. If you're blindly trying to shoot submissions, don't expect your submission rate to be that great. They're easy to see coming. They're naturally telegraphed without a setup. This is something that will just be naturally difficult until you learn those setups. Now, if you watch high level guys, or let's say you watch a high level guy go with a lower level guy, Typically, they're three to five steps ahead of the person they're rolling with, that lower belt, right? You'll see them string attacks together and they'll basically back them into a corner. They will present dilemmas, right? You either respect one or suffer from the other. And depending on what you do, you know, you end up painting yourself into a corner, which inevitably leads to a submission that you can't escape. You're hardly going to see someone just throw up a wild submission and watch it connect and watch it work, right? These things need setups. Sure, can it work every now and then? Yes, but I'm telling you, you start learning setups for your submissions, your success rate is going to skyrocket. So if you're new to jujitsu or maybe you've been training for a year and you're still struggling with these things, remember, if you're stalemating, some stalemates are unnecessary. You can allow an opportunity for your opponent to move, which creates opportunity for you. Number two, focusing on your breath work. If you catch yourself holding your breath, it's nothing to get upset about. We all do it. It's just something to work on, right? And when you do begin to improve at this, you will see how much it improves your jujitsu. And number three, stop trying to hit submissions without any setups, unless it's right there and ripe for the taking, right? Which sometimes happens obviously jump on those opportunities, but most of the time we will need setups for submissions and this will greatly help improve your jujitsu. If you guys have any tips that have helped with your white belt journey or maybe helped other white belts with their journey, drop them in the comments because you never know who you're helping with that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Sometimes backwards, always forwards. I'll see you later.